Today's video is sponsored by Hitpoint Press and the new Shift RPG system. Alright guys, Jameson and Alex here. Today we're going to be talking about the new official, yes, there's a new book out, crazy, Kender Race from Dragonlance. Yeah. So if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to be entered in our D&D Beyond Sourcebook Bundle giveaway. It's the big one. It's bigger. It's so, better. We're going to be taking a quick look at the abilities on here and also if there's been any major changes and what they are for the original Unearthed Arcana version of it. Getting some of the quick little mechanical things out of the way, the kinder rules they've given in here kind of go into the new form of character creation where mm -hmm. it's like, okay, you can do whatever stats you want, plus two to one stat, one to another, or three different stats get plus one. Languages, common language of choice that you and your DM agree is appropriate for the character. Sure. I, mean, I don't know a lot of DMs that would be like frowning you picking whatever language you want. Unless there's right. a particular reason why, like for the lore of the campaign, you would have no reason or way to know that language. Sure. Creature type, humanoid, wonderful. Uh, lifespan, you know, normal. Again, they're, they're, they're a humanoid creature. Yep. We're going to get to some of this. Same height, weight, all that wonderful stuff. So, here's what actually makes it interesting and different besides just being another human. Because they are humanoid creatures. During the mythical origins of Kryn, Reoryx, god of craft, indulged in an age of unfettered creation. Many people sprang from his divine forge, but not all among them remained as the god created them. Altered by unbridled magic, a group of gnomes were transformed and given almost supernatural curiosity and fearlessness. These were the first kinder. So I think, you know, they're gnomes that were kind of morphed by magic to be a little right. bit different. Enough to where they became their own race. Yes. So actually looking at the traits on here, uh, I think you are humanoid. You are small. Walking speed is 30 feet. They've really gotten rid of the less than 30 feet movement speed, even yeah. with the updated... Dwarf stuff, yeah, that they've changed to 30 feet. Poor dwarf. So, uh, yes, I do immediately see off the bat one major change is uh, one of the abilities is just gone. They just completely removed it, uh, which was the Kender Ace, which uh, was basically you had like a bag and you could pull out random objects from the bag. Uh, and that is just gone. It was a number of uses per proficiency use per, per day or long rest, I should say. And uh, yeah, that is completely gone. We do, however, still have the Taunt ability, yep. which there are some other things that replace the Kender Ace that I'll get to here in a second. Yep. But the Taunt, I think, is, is probably the main go-to interesting thing about it, sure. which is you have the ability to fluster creatures, something we don't see much in 5th edition, which is... Like compelled duel is like pretty much the extent of it. <laughs> kind of to an extent. <laughs> like what I can uh, think of. As a bonus action, you can unleash a string of provoking words at a creature within 60 feet that can hear you and understand you. Important. Target must succeed a wisdom save or have disadvantage on attack rolls against targets other than you until the start of your next turn. The DC is 8 plus proficiency plus your intelligence, wisdom, or charisma modifier, which you choose when you select the race. Which I really do like with the racial, because it's like, it makes you look as if you picked to be a wizard, you pick your intelligence, it wouldn't feel bad. It's like, oh, it's going to be your charisma. It's like, well, I want to do this because it sounds cool, but I'm playing a fighter. I don't need my charisma for anything. Yeah. Uh, it is. Only uses of proficiency per long rest, so yes. uh, that is pretty standard for a race to have proficiency nowadays. To yeah, have it used to be a certain uses. modifier or like right. once per short rest or something, or, yeah, or once a day for some of the original stuff. Yeah, but yeah, that is the main feature. It's it's not quite a compelled duel. It's kind of more yeah. like the defense defensive the fighting protection style. protection. Yeah, I was I De I defense thinking. is the plus one armor. Right. Yeah. Protection. Protection. Yeah. I don't think. Mm -hmm. uh, but. I mean, the the f fact that there's not really a whole lot of things to fo force creatures yeah. to attack you. It's, it's, it's labeled as taunt, but it's not a, like a hard taunt yeah, it's as like what some... you would think of in traditional RPG games. It's not a hard taunt. Right. So, I mean, this will take it. It makes for an interesting yeah. kind of uh, tanky build. If you're looking yeah. to build something like that, mm -hmm. it definitely would be something useful to have. Because yeah. if you had protection fighting style and this, then you yeah. have multiple ways to trigger that effect. Yep. So, it could be interesting. Mm -hmm. You also have uh, Kender Aptitude, which gives you a proficiency in one of the following skills of your choice, which is Insight, Investigation, Sleight of Hand, Stealth, or Survival. So, it's a pretty good mix of options on there. Yep. And it's going to let you kind of round out your character based on, you know, what other 
subclasses or things that are giving you skills. Yep. For sure. And then lastly, we have Fearless, which is advantage on saving throws you make to avoid or end the frightening condition on yourself. When you fail a saving throw to avoid or end the frightening condition, you can choose to succeed instead. Once you succeed a saving throw this way, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest. Legendary so, resistance just for frightening. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and it, that's also something that's new, too, in the newer races, is they say to avoid or end. Yeah. Because, like... It feels use, bad if you have advantage on avoiding it, and then once you get it, you're just stuck like normal. So right. It's, so they started, to, they started to do that more yeah, as well, I, too, I like that. Which is interesting. Yeah. But, yeah, um, with the bag of aces, I mean, that, what they did before was just that and the taunt. So they added... Well, they also had advantage on saving throws to end or avoid the frightening condition. So they improved that they, to they give you one that. free. Yeah, and they gave Kinder aptitudes. They gave you an extra skill check to get around uh, yeah. instead of the aces thing. Yeah, I, I wonder why they did that because all the stuff in here wasn't really much. I mean, well, the one was 5d6 gold pieces. So, I mean, I don't. And there was simple weapon of your choice with light weapon property. One item of your choice from adventuring gear, one random item from a trinkets table, choice of crowbar, grappling hook, one item of your choice of tools. So it's just like random stuff yeah, you can pull Random little hat. RP stuff. Like none of that's going to be helpful in combat except for the simple weapon, but again, that's not going to be a, a breaking thing if like all of a sudden you're able to pull it's like, aha, I have a dagger. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, so. You don't already have one on your belt already? And, and, only, like... and the thing is too, it only lasted for an hour. Yeah. So like, it, just, it wasn't like you got to get it and it just disappeared. It, like you got to keep it. It wasn't like you just stockpile stuff, you know? It's like, it would just, if you got 5d6 gold, you could like pay someone and then like, poof, it goes away. So that might create more problems for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's like this little weird looking gnome creature has been paying, we're going around town, he's paying for stuff, but it doesn't actually pay for stuff. So yeah, I'm kind of curious as to why they would remove that. Because it, I mean, it doesn't seem crazy, but to no. completely remove it and just give you a, a skill proficiency instead seems a little weird to me. Yeah. Because the Aces thing gave it a unique yeah. something. Hope it stay stand out, but eh, it is what it is. Yeah, I, I think it's still an interesting option for, like I said, like tank characters and stuff. Yeah, the taunt so. thing, and then being able to get rid of the frightened condition very effectively is good. Yeah, I mean, if, especially if you find a lot of dragons, they have fearful presence, and it's like annoyance, right? <laughs> to deal with. So yeah, um, I mean, guys, this book is marketed as an adventure. It just happens to have a race and a subclass. Yep. And some, race, subclass, a couple of feats, couple backgrounds. Yeah, so um, if you guys want to learn more about the feats and backgrounds, we could maybe do a video on that as well. So make sure you let us know. If this video and the subclass video do well, we might just do it anyway and do like a full overview, maybe of the spoiler-free overview kind of like yeah, we know the story the and in there. Yeah, stuff. No, just, just the, the features other. of the book. Character so, yeah. creation stuff. Yeah, so if you want to see more of that, let us know in the comments down below. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll just... Here's your race and subclass. I know you guys like that stuff, and we'll just leave it at that. So, That's right. if you want to see monsters and stuff too, we could be do some of those. So, yeah, yeah. Let us know in the comments down below what you want to see. If you have anything you want to submit or suggest, let us know. But that's gonna be for today, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when all of our new videos are coming out. Check out our sponsors in the link down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Shift is a brand new RPG system in development that lets you play in any world you can imagine and allows players and GMs to create their own custom rules with ease. Every aspect of Shift is powered by traits with an associated Shift die. As characters use their traits to interact with the world around them, the traits die will change, shifting to better or worse dice as the narrative unfolds. Every die roll in Shift risks your dice shifting, which keeps the action exciting and dynamic. Check it out today at hitpointpress.com shift.